Hey guys, it's Mr. Cavanus, and this is an introduction to biology. So what is biology? Well, I'm a little biased, but I think it's the most interesting and the most important of all the sciences. I mean, think about it. You got physics, study of how objects move. You got chemistry, the study of matter and changes in matter and how uh, molecules react with each other. But biology is the study of life. It's the study of living organisms. What could be more interesting than that? Biology, like a lot of words in science, is derived from Greek words. M many words in science have either Greek or Latin origins. Specifically, biology comes from the Greek word bios, which means life or living, and logos, which means study of. Any word that ends in L-O-G-Y is the study of something. Biology is the study of life. Now, the study of life is extremely broad, and there's no way anybody could be an expert on all of those different disciplines that fall under the umbrella of biology. So biology is divided up into many sub-disciplines, what I call the branches of biology. We'll explore many of them in this course, and I don't expect you to memorize all of these branches, but there are a few, about 10 or 12, that I'm going to briefly uh, go over now, and I do want you to know these. Uh, and yes, there will be a quiz at some point. So let's begin with anatomy, which is the study of structure the study of the parts of organisms. So in anatomy, I might be interested in learning the names of the bones in the human body, the muscles that are attached to those bones. I might be interested um, in learning the various chambers of the heart, the right atrium, the right ventricle, the left atrium, the left ventricle, and all of the valves and blood vessels uh, that, that make the heart work. On the other hand, um, if I'm studying physiology, which is another branch of biology, I still might be studying the heart, but now I'm interested in how it works. How does it pump blood? How does it contract? Um, how do the valves open and close? Um, so physiology is the study of how things work, the, the functions of the various parts of the body. Those two go hand in hand. Anatomy is the study of structure. Physiology is the study of function. Now, uh, on, on the left-hand picture here, you see uh, some erythrocytes, otherwise known as red blood cells. Uh, and then on the right, of course, you have a, a labeled diagram of a typical cell. The study of cells is, is called cytology. And it, you'll find that anytime you, you hear or see this, this uh, root word, C-Y-T, site, um, it always has something to do with cells. Uh, these are erythrocytes. Um, another type of blood cell is called leukocytes, white blood cells. Um, phagocytosis, a great big word that we'll be learning about later. It has that CYT right in the middle of it. Phagocytosis is the consuming of cells by other cells. So anytime you, you see that CYT, you know the word means something related to cells. And if you can start to pick up on these Greek and Latin roots, it'll help you learn the vocabulary in this course a lot more quickly. Okay, next on the list, is the branch of biology that studies interactions between living things and their environments. And this is called ecology. You're looking at a picture here of an ecosystem and uh, a person who studies ecology, an ecologist, uh, would be interested in, for example, how the populations of uh, diatoms and very small animals in the water affect say, the fish population and how the fish population is affected by the heron population and 
also how all of these populations interact with the environment. So if there is, uh, say, pollution that's, that's washing into this estuary from, you know, from human activities, uh, that pollution is going to affect all of these populations and how they interact. So ecology, the study of interactions between living things and their environment. Okay, next we have, this one I guess is fairly obvious what it is, evolutionary biology. It's a study of evolution, uh, the study of how species, how living things change uh, over time, how they adapt so that they are better suited and better able to survive within their environments. Uh, next on the list, the study of fossils, which is called paleontology. Paleo means old or ancient. So quite literally, this is the study of old, ancient things, and fossils certainly are that. Um, there's a particularly uh, interesting fossil that you see in this, in this right-hand picture here. Uh, this uh, particular species that's known from the fossil record is called Archaeopteryx. And these lived something on the order of 65 to 70 million years ago. Uh, this animal, when it was alive, was about the size of a wild turkey. If you look at the skeleton, uh, there's no doubt that it's a close relative of velociraptors, uh, what are called uh, theropod dinosaurs, two-legged meat-eating dinosaurs. Long reptilian tail, very sharp claws on the feet and uh, on the forearms as well. But what's really interesting uh, about this particular fossil, if I can get the slide to change here, bear with me just there we go, uh, is that you see very clearly the impressions that were left behind when this animal fossilized of feathers. So the skeleton sort of suggests dinosaur, but the feathers very clearly suggest bird. This is an early species of bird, and Archaeopteryx uh, is one of those really prized fossil finds because it represents what's called a transitional form, meaning this one species has characteristics of an older group and a more modern group in the fossil record. So it kind of shows the transition of theropod dinosaurs to modern day birds, a connection that nobody even really thought about until um, maybe the last 50 to 60 years. So paleontology, uh, the study of fossils. Okay, next on the list um, is the naming and classification of living organisms. That branch of biology is called taxonomy. And the man who is most famous uh, for creating the system that we use to categorize life is this man, Carolus Linnaeus. We'll be talking a lot more about him later. Here's an example of what taxonomists do. They figure out how all different kinds of living things are related to each other and, and how, how to group them in a way that makes sense. So here's just an example of uh, your, your kitty cat that you might have at home. The species name, the scientific name is Felis catus. Um, and that tells me that uh, they belong to a larger group called genus Felis. And you can see that um, th that uh, all cats belong to um, a, an even larger group called family Felidae. That would include things like mountain lions and bobcats, not just domesticated cats. Um, if you go up a level, you see order carnivora or carnivora. These are four-legged meat-eating mammals. Both cats and dogs belong to that group. Class mammalia, subphylum vertebrata, phylum chordata, and of course, cats are animals. So every living thing, every plant, every animal, every fungus, every bacteria fits into a, uh, a organized grouping like you see represented here. And it's taxonomists who, who keep up with all of this. 